Got it. Okay, three, two, one. Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for dying for our sins and for my sins. I'm so grateful for your mercy that endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us again with your spirit. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you, Lord. So we're in Mark, the 15th chapter, and we're talking about the death of Christ. Remember, he's been through six trials. He's been beaten. He's been mocked. He's been spit upon. He's been, the guard has um, gambled for his clothing. And, uh, and now he's been on the cross since nine this morning, nine this morning. Mm -hmm. And now it's at noon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, the middle of the ordeal, I guess you could say, I mean, of being actually on that cross, yeah. which is uh, unimaginable, yes. really. Um, so here we are picking up uh, Mark 15, verse 33, and we're going to try the New Living Translation. Here that we works. Go. Sorry. That works. Good. Okay, so at noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Right there, this is interesting. Um, the uh, it, when I first read this, okay, so this this was an eclipse, but eclipses don't last for hours on end like that. They usually come and go in a matter of minutes. Yes. Uh, there was a, a great passage in. Uh, I think it's Obadiah. Yeah. It says, the Lord says, I will darken the day. Yes. And it kind of flushes out some of the details that, that are exactly what he's going through here. Amen. Kind of interesting. Um, so there's this darkness that it, it's just, it's not an eclipse. It is an actual loss of light. That's right. Remember, God is light and in him, there is no darkness at all. Yeah. But at this moment, the world is losing light okay. uh, for a moment because darkness is ruling. Darkness is has the upper hand right now. They think they're ruling. And you think about these Roman soldiers whose business is crucifying people, and all of a sudden, three hours into their into their tour, not for mm -hmm. uh, into their into that duties of that day. I mean, they've been, uh, it's been more than that because they had to make sure he carried the cross and that they had other people carry the cross. And then, um, so, but anyway, three hours into this crucifixion, everything goes dark. Hmm. Like, if it's dark at noon, because you're seeing a storm coming in and you've got lanterns and stuff, but if it's dark at noon with no warning, like snook, boom, yeah, uh, you just think, "Whoa, this is really remarkable." Yeah, and yeah, uh, so so he, he went to the cross nine o'clock in the morning. He's at noon. Darkness fills the whole area. Um, the sense of that is, this isn't a minor dark spot on this hill. Golgotha. This isn't everywhere you look, there's no sunlight. Mm. And you think, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I should, uh, we should uh, clarify what I said earlier that uh, um, about uh, God going out of the world. Um, God cannot die. That's right. This is Jesus, a human being on the cross. He died as a human being. He had to, to be able to offer a, 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 um, a kinsman redeemer sacrifice which was required that means man for man he is a man, man died for, for the men of anyway. sorry man for mankind mankind there you go that's yeah that's what i wanted to finish with uh yeah so man for mankind um that's what was going that's what's going on here uh g uh, uh, god of course is the only one who has the authority to forgive sins yes so his divinity is there to uh, grant the authority through the Father, to, you know, passing on the Father's authority uh, to uh, actually have this sacrifice. 
Um, but uh, it's it's Jesus, the human being, that's actually bleeding and dying. Yes. But the, the, nonetheless, that is enough to uh, it's causing a, a a diminution in God. I think I believe that uh, that's causing this this darkness to occur. The Father from heaven is, you know, obviously not uh, not uh, pouring forth more photons at that moment. It's a matter matter of darkness being the rule of the hour that's right so um and, yeah, and, and to think that jesus suffered alone for three hours is uh, we don't know but we do know that he makes this loud cry even if it's a microsecond that he's that he's separated from the father um that's astonishing and had had never been done before even before time Mm. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are always connected eternally. Yep. And this moment, there's some separation. Yep. So verse 34, at three o'clock, Jesus called on us. This is six hours later. And he still had enough strength to speak at all. It's pretty amazing. It is. Uh, and he actually calls out with a loud voice, Lama, Lama Sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Yeah. Why have you forsaken me? Word, word abandoned might even be better. Yeah. Um, so, and of course, that's a that's a quote from the Psalms. And yeah. um, and if you if you don't understand this in the context of Psalm 22, then you get to the place of saying, What? Mm. Um, but the the payment for sin had to be by a perfect man. And and briefly, Jesus lays aside his deity and uh, mm -hmm. dies an agonizing death. The, the, the God part of Jesus only suffered for the, for the payment of sin, but the man part of Jesus suffered from the executioners, you know, that the Romans had, had invented, had not invented, but had mastered or had studied how to make it even mm. more painful mm. this apparently is the only place where jesus uh calls upon the father as my god and that doesn't say father that's right that reflects his separation right. at this moment other... from the father it has to be his case the sin bearer that's right and this is the whole point that sin can't be uh, uh in any way associated with god so uh, as the sin bearer, he is separate and, for these moments and uh, calls him God rather than Father. And and I understand that sentence and I agree with it, except that this is quoting Psalm 22, where, where the psalmist is looking forward to Jesus saying, my God, my God. So mm -hmm. um, almost, almost <laughs> every time in the New Testament, we see the relationship between the son and the father in terms of father. Yep. But in this one case, but the answer is, it, it, like Rich just said, this has this has obvious implications for how how the payment of sin works. Yep. Yep. Yeah. If it, it, again, it, this is showing the the gravity of sin. Just how great is it? You know, you think so many times. <laughs> on the verge of straying and, and stretching the uh, the permissive will of God and so forth, we think in terms of you know how how bad is this? And <laughs> the cross is the answer. Great. 35. Verse thirty five. Some of the bystanders mistood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah, which is weird because people are hearing what they want to hear. They knew Psalm 22. They knew the prophecies, but they they saw, okay, he's calling for Elijah, yeah. <laughs> and 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 the reality is in your in your moments in the in the flesh, you often misunderstand what God is saying. Mm. One of them ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up on a reed stick so he could drink. Wait, let's see whether Elijah comes to take him down. Hmm. So uh, a few hours earlier, they're saying, come down from the cross. And then uh, 
Oh, maybe a wiser will take him down. And mm. then yeah. 47. Yeah, it's amazing how um, because crucifixions became relatively common. I mean, this was this was yeah. going on all the time, how uh, carelessly, how uh, casually, uh, cavalierly that we talk about them. Uh, and they do, too. And not realizing <laughs> just how intense this really is. Uh, yeah, so verse 37. Yeah. Uh, then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. Another loud cry. This is his very last breath. And this is this is so unusual for a crucifixion because uh, it literally just drains you, saps you of your energy hour after hour of ling lingering there. Um, you can't tell, you can't, you can hardly see any evidence of light, a pulse or breath and so forth. You have to look very close, which is why they had the practice of breaking the legs to ensure, you know, when they got into it far enough, they think the guy is dead. They typically break the legs to ensure that uh, he would be, he, he would die. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so this is outstanding. This to me is one of the two bookends of the Passion Week. This, uh, uh, Jesus giving out this loud cry at the very, his very last breath, a loud cry, that is unheard of. I mean, that is just, you know, again, because of the, the kind of death that the crucifixion is. The other end of the uh, book ends is back in uh, Gethsemane when um, the cohort of, uh, of uh, Jewish guards, temple guards, and the Romans showed up to take him prisoner, and Jesus confronts them. Uh, kind of, uh, and uh, asks them, who are you looking for? And uh, they say, Jesus of Nazareth, to which he answers, I am he. Yes. And it's, uh, when, he, uh, when he says that, they all fall down, yeah. fall back and down. I, I, I can't help but imagine what a racket that must have made <laughs> with all, all of the... Uh, the armaments that these guys are carrying, all the steel clank in, yeah. it must have sounded like a train wrecker. Yeah. Hundreds of guys, boom, knocks them right off their feet. That's right. And um, so uh, so the question is, who's really in charge here? That's right. And at the very end of the crucifixion, we have this loud shout, which is completely beyond uh, natural, supernatural. Uh, hard to appreciate unless you're you know, familiar with the crucifixion. Um, and there they are, the, the beginning and the end of the Passion, uh, framing the entire event. And yes, there are a number of spots along the way where Jesus orchestrates particular things happening uh, to make sure the whole thing comes, comes to pass. But it, those bookends um, show that Jesus was in control uh, of the entire Passion Week. Okay, let's... Uh... So much to talk about in the next couple of verses. Let's pick it up tomorrow. Then. Okay. All right. Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for dying and excruciating death to pay for our sin. We don't always understand why there needs to be shedding of blood for the forgiveness of sin, but we do know, we do know that you loved us enough to go through this so that we could be forgiven. Transform us, O oh Lord, so we can live sanctified lives. Bring blessing to us so we can bless others. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you again for your word and spirit and the uh, the passion of all passions uh, described here. Uh, help us to always uh, strive to try to appreciate, although... <laughs> When will we ever fully? As I don't even mention it. That's not possible. Yes. But to think in terms of what you went through to redeem us uh, is utterly, utterly amazing. Yes. The amazing love of God. Yes. And for that, we thank you. And we pray for your di direction that we might live lives that glorify you yes. in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day all. Oh.